Where do the Turkish people really come from? For generations, this question has sparked debates, theories, and national curiosity. Some say modern Turks are mainly descended from ancient Central Asian tribes. Others believe their story reaches far deeper into Anatolia, connecting them to some of the oldest civilizations on Earth. Now, for the first time, DNA research is giving us clear answers. And what scientists have uncovered is far more surprising than anyone expected. So stay with me until the end, because we're about to explore the hidden layers of Turkish DNA, a story shaped by ancient farmers, powerful empires, and thousands of years of migration. But before we dive in, let me ask you something. What do you believe is the true origin of the Turkish people, Central Asia, ancient Anatolia, or both? Share your answer in the comments. The modern population of Turkey did not simply appear with one migration or one wave of conquerors. Instead, the land we now call Anatolia has been home to many different peoples for thousands of years. Scientists studying ancient DNA have discovered something important. The strongest roots of modern Turkish DNA come from deep in Anatolia itself. When scientists examine ancient skeletons found across Anatolia, they notice a clear pattern. The earliest known farming communities in the region go back nearly 10,000 years. These early farmers built permanent homes, planted crops, raised animals, and formed some of the first settled societies in human history. Their DNA contributes a major share of the genetic foundation that exists in Turkey today. As time passed, new groups arrived. Bronze Age civilizations such as the Hittites, Luwians, and Hurrians built cities, traded with neighboring cultures, and created organized states. These groups all left a lasting mark on the region. What surprised many researchers is that the genetic signatures of these ancient Anatolians still appear strongly in the DNA of modern Turkish people. Despite the many political and cultural changes that came later, the deep, early layer remained. During the Iron Age, more populations arrived or formed, including Phrygians, Urartians, and others who spoke varied languages. Although these groups are remembered differently in history books, they all contributed to the long-term population of the region. By the time the first millennium BC came to an end, Anatolia had already developed into one of the most diverse areas in the ancient world. This is the first major insight scientists discovered. Modern Turkish DNA is closely connected to the people who lived in Anatolia thousands of years before Turkic migrations. The genetic continuity is strong, and this foundation gives the population a sense of deep historical connection to the land. It shows that many ancestors of today's Turks were already living in this region long before the medieval period. When the first Turkic warriors and settlers reached Anatolia in the medieval period, they encountered a region already home to many long-established populations. Military victories and political changes gave the newcomers influence. Over time, the local communities began adopting Turkic languages and Turkic cultural elements. Scientists expected this migration to create a dominant Central Asian genetic signature across the region. But the DNA evidence shows something different. The Central Asian contribution is present, but it is smaller than the cultural impact. Most of the people who adopted Turkic identity were already living in Anatolia for generations. They blended culturally while keeping much of their older genetic background. This finding helps explain a key point. The Turkic migrations brought new language, new traditions, and new social structures, but they did not replace the entire population. As we move forward in time, we see the influence of many neighboring cultures. Anatolia has always been connected to surrounding regions, and these connections left a mark on the genetic landscape. The western parts of Anatolia interacted closely with Greek-speaking populations. For centuries, coastal cities traded, shared ideas, and sometimes even lived under the same empires. This created a noticeable Mediterranean component in the population. It does not dominate the overall genetic picture, but it adds another important shade to the mix. To the east and southeast, there were long-standing ties with the peoples of the Near East. These included Armenians, Assyrians, and communities from Mesopotamia. Their presence in the region goes back to antiquity, and their genetic signatures still appear today. 
across southern Anatolia, influences from older Levantine populations can be found as well. Trade routes, shared borders, and cultural exchanges created small but detectable genetic links. These details might seem minor in isolation, but together, they help explain why the population of modern Turkey is so varied. Another important discovery is the influence of historical Jewish, Arab, and Persian communities. They did not form the majority of the population, but their presence in cities and trade networks added small contributions to the gene pool. These influences often grew during periods of strong cultural and commercial exchange. All these layers show that Anatolia did not evolve in isolation. The region was a meeting point for civilizations, and the genetic data reflects this long record of contact. Anatolia was also part of a network that stretched across continents. The Silk Road connected the Mediterranean world to Central Asia, Persia, and eventually China and South Asia. Goods, ideas, and people traveled along these routes. Although not every traveler settled permanently, even small movements of groups over time contributed to the region's complexity. Persian influence is one example. For long periods, Persian-speaking empires controlled or interacted with parts of Anatolia. Their administrative systems, cultural practices, and communities added another layer to the region's diversity. This influence shows up clearly in DNA, especially in eastern and central areas. Central Asian and steppe groups also continued to arrive, even after the first Turkic migrations. Some came as soldiers, others as traders or migrants. Their contributions were smaller compared to the earlier waves, but they helped strengthen the Central Asian element within the population. The Caucasus played an important role as well. Communities from the Northern and Southern Caucasus moved into Anatolia through trade routes, political alliances, or population shifts. Georgians, Circassians, and other groups added new genetic signatures that are still visible today. The next major change in the story comes with the transformation of Anatolia from the Byzantine era into the Seljuk and later Ottoman periods. This was not only a political shift, it also changed language, religion, population structures, and cultural identity. These transitions are crucial for understanding modern Turkish DNA. During the Byzantine period, much of Anatolia was Greek-speaking and Christian. But this population was not one single group. It was already a blend of the older Anatolian communities and the peoples who had settled during earlier empires. When the Seljuks entered the region, they introduced a new ruling class, new cultural symbols, and a new religion. Over time, many local communities adopted these changes. Later, the Ottoman Empire expanded the region's connections even further. Anatolia became the center of a vast state stretching across the Balkans, the Middle East, and North Africa. People moved within the empire for military service, trade, administration, and marriage. Balkan communities, Caucasian groups, Arabs, Kurds, and others added to the diversity. These movements produced regional differences that still exist today. Western Anatolia shows more Mediterranean and Balkan influence. Eastern regions show deeper Near Eastern and Caucasian signals. Central areas maintain a strong ancient Anatolian base. But across all regions, we see the same general pattern. Older Anatolian ancestry forms the foundation, while later layers from steppe, Mediterranean, Near Eastern, Caucasian, and Balkan populations build on top of it. As we move into the Ottoman period, the story of Turkish DNA becomes even more layered. The Ottoman Empire ruled over a vast territory that included the Balkans, the Caucasus, the Middle East, and parts of North Africa. This created a world in which people, goods, and ideas moved constantly. It also meant that many different groups entered Anatolia, either by choice or through historical events. A major contribution came from the Balkans. During the long centuries of Ottoman rule, people from regions such as Bosnia, Albania, Bulgaria, and Greece participated in the empire as soldiers, officials, merchants, and craftsmen. Some moved to Anatolia for work or administration, while others arrived during periods of conflict. 
These movements added recognizable Balkan and Slavic influences to the genetic landscape, especially in western parts of Turkey. Another important element came from the Caucasus. Communities such as Circassians, Georgians, Abkhazians, and others entered Anatolia through both migration and political agreements. Many of these groups settled in different regions, especially during the 19th century, and their genetic signatures remain visible in modern populations. Middle Eastern and North African connections also existed, though to a smaller degree. People traveled across imperial borders for trade, religious scholarship, or military service. This contributed modest but meaningful traces from Arab, Kurdish, and other regional groups. Taken together, these movements made the Ottoman period a time of increased mobility and mixing. The result is clear in genetic studies. The Ottoman era did not replace earlier populations, but it added new layers that increased diversity. This period helps explain why modern Turkish DNA contains signals from the Balkans, the Caucasus, and various parts of the Middle East. Each of these layers reflects the long reach of an empire that connected many different lands. When scientists look at DNA patterns across different regions of Turkey, they see a strong sense of unity, but also noticeable variation. These differences reflect local histories, migration routes, and cultural exchanges that happened over long periods. In western Turkey, the populations show slightly stronger Mediterranean and Balkan influences. This makes sense, given the region's long history of contact with Greece, the Aegean world, and the Balkans. Coastal cities traded frequently with nearby regions, and the Ottoman connections brought additional layers from southeastern Europe. Central Anatolia holds one of the strongest mixtures of ancient Anatolian ancestry. While there are also influences from the Seljuk and Ottoman periods, the deep local roots remain very visible. This region reflects the long-term stability of communities that lived on the central plains for generations. Eastern Turkey has its own distinct patterns. Here, scientists see stronger contributions from Armenian, Kurdish, and Caucasian populations. These links reflect the region's deep history as a crossroads between Anatolia, the Caucasus, and Mesopotamia. Trade routes, historical kingdoms, and later political changes all played a role in shaping the gene pool. Northern Anatolia, especially along the Black Sea coast, shows connections to Georgian and other Caucasian groups. The geography of the region, with its mountain valleys and coastal settlements, encouraged both local continuity and periodic movement from neighboring regions. Southeastern regions display older ties to Mesopotamia and the Levant. These patterns come from ancient cultural exchanges as well as later historical events. Despite these differences, all of these regional groups share the same broad ancestry structure. The foundation remains ancient Anatolian, with layers added over time from Central Asia, the Mediterranean, the Caucasus, the Balkans, and the Near East. The variety we see today reflects the long and complex history of the land. When scientists combine all the data, from ancient DNA, medieval migrations, and imperial movements, a clearer picture emerges. Modern Turkish DNA does not come from one source or one moment in history. Instead, it is built from many layers that formed over thousands of years. The largest component comes from the ancient peoples of Anatolia. Their genetic signatures are strong and widespread across the region. This deep and stable foundation explains why so many modern communities share similar core ancestry. The Central Asian contribution from Turkic migrations is present and important, but it is smaller than many early theories suggested. The influence of these migrations was significant in shaping language, culture, and political structures, while the genetic impact blended with the long-established populations. Mediterranean and Near Eastern elements add additional texture. These come from Greek-speaking populations, Armenian and Assyrian communities, and people from the Levant and Mesopotamia. Their presence reflects the region's position between the Mediterranean world and the ancient Near East. Balkan and Caucasian influences help explain the diversity that expanded during the Ottoman centuries. These groups entered Anatolia through both peaceful movement and historical events, 
contributing to the regional differences seen today. The history of Turkey itself, from ancient Anatolian settlers and Bronze Age kingdoms to Central Asian tribes and the vast Ottoman Empire, every chapter has left its mark on the Turkish genetic code. If you've enjoyed this journey through the unique DNA of Turkey, let us know in the comments. Have you taken a DNA test and discovered some unexpected Turkish roots? Or maybe you've always wondered about the origins of your family's features or traditions. Share your stories, we'd love to hear them. And don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more content, and hit the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Thanks for watching, and Hoshja Kellen. Goodbye for now.